Okay, so let's uh, begin with just a quick review of axioms for norm. So, given the vector space, given the vector space x and of course the field f, we wrote three axioms for defining a norm on this. So, this function called norm was a function that was from x to r plus, r plus is real positive integers real positive positive real numbers including 0. So, r plus is set of positive real numbers including 0. So, this is this is a function from an element in x. This is a compact way of writing from element in x to r plus and we said there are three axioms. One is that norm x is greater than 0 for all x that belong to x and x not equal to 0 vector and norm x is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to 0 vector. So, this was the first axiom. The second axiom was norm of alpha times x is norm x mod alpha or absolute value of alpha times norm x where alpha is a scalar belonging to field f and the third the third axiom is triangle inequality triangle inequality so this this states that distance of x plus y take any two elements from vector space x distance of the vector x plus y is always less than or equal to uh, or the length of vector norm of vector of x plus y is always less than or equal to norm x plus norm y this is generalization of triangle inequality that you know for one dimension or in three dimensions for triangles uh, generalized to any other space. So, we said anything, any function that that satisfies uh, these criteria, it should be a real positive function, it gives you, it should give you a real number, uh, it should be a non-zero real number or when x is not zero, it should be zero real number when or it should be zero when uh, x is not equal to zero vector and so on. So, these are and then we saw a couple of examples that that can be that of functions that can be classified as a norm or that cannot be classified as a norm. So uh, both are important because you understand something better when you see where these one of these axiom fails. Okay, so there are multiple ways of defining norms, not a unique way. A pair of a vector space together with or a linear space together with a definition of norm gives you a norm vector space. Okay, so that is another uh, take home message. Well, why did we do this? I yesterday said that we are doing all this because you know we want to talk about at some point about limits and sequences. So, why do I need to talk about limits? When we when we work in numerical methods, we are forced to look at sequences of vectors. Okay, I'll just give you a very brief example. We'll actually do this much more in detail later. Let's say I want to solve this equation. These two are coupled equations and I want to solve them simultaneously. Okay, I want to solve them simultaneously. This kind of problems, uh, I'm writing it in an abstract form. Very often we encounter these kind of problems. Well, I am going to write this in abstract way as f function 1 x y is equal to 0 and function 2 x y 
is equal to 0. There are two functions. There are two functions. F1 xy is equal to 0. F2 xy is equal to 0. Okay. And this kind of equations arise. Steady state of a CSTR. Concentration and temperature are linked. So first equation could be energy balance. Second could be material balance. And then you get two equations in two unknowns. Concentration and temperature. You have to solve them for. Okay. So uh, I'm going to define a vector. This is my function vector. I'm going to call this as f of x. Uh, well, let me call uh, some new variable is equal to 0. So my neta is a vector. My neta is a vector which comprises of x and y. And then I want to solve for f neta is equal to 0 vector. This is my 0 vector. This is my 0 vector. Okay. I want to, so I'm just writing the same thing in a different format. Okay. Now, what method you know for solving this? How do you solve this? You wouldn't have seen? Pardon me? Bijection method. Bijection method is for difficult to uh, scale to two variables. One variable, well defined bijection method is there. You can have a bijection method for two variables, but well, let's take a very simple iterative scheme. Let's construct a very simple iterative scheme. I'll write neta plus f neta. I'll add this vector neta on both sides. Okay. And then I'll construct an iteration. Whether it will converge or not is a different story, but I'll construct an iter iterative process. So I'll start with some guess vector neta 0, that is, let's say, well, I don't know what the solution is, so I'm going to guess some solution. So let's say I start with, say, minus 1 and 1. This is x, this is y, okay? And then what I want to do is to say that neta k plus 1 is equal to neta k plus f of neta k. Is it okay? I have just formulated an iteration scheme. I have just formulated an iteration scheme in which I start with vector 0. I take this 0 vector, substitute here. Okay, I'll get vector 1. Okay, I take vector 1, substitute here, I'll get vector 2. I'll get vector 2. Okay, how do I know whether this sequence of vectors is converging to something? Pardon me? What is difference? See, it's a it's a two-dimensional vector. Now, I have just for the convenience written two-dimensional vector. I could have done this in n dimensions. I could have written this in n dimensions. N equations in n unknowns, very, very common. Chemical engineering, starting, s trying to solve steady state energy material balance for a plant. You can get 1000 equations in 1000 unknowns. Okay. Pardon me? But what of difference vector? Norm of the difference vector. Okay. So we have to so we have to talk about a vector converging to another vector. A vector converging to a solution. What should happen at the solution? Let's say if x star is a solution, neta star is a solution. F neta is equal to zero. Well, what she says is correct that uh, one thing is that, you know, should be equal to zero. Of course, at the solution, so at neta star, so that is, that is F neta star is equal to zero. Fine. Okay. But I'm starting a iterative process. Okay. So what I'm going to get is I'm going to get this vector sequence X neta 0, neta 1, 2, and so on. I'm going to get this vector. The question is, is this sequence, is this sequence converging to 
Nita star. Does this go to Nita star? Okay, that is the question I need to answer. See, this is the solution. If I pluck Nita k here, it is not going to be equal to 0. It is not going to be equal to 0. So, it is going to be some other small number probably. Is it small? Okay, so how do you answer this question? How do you answer these questions in general n dimensional spaces or function spaces? That is where we need to now talk about. I may have a scenario where I have a sequence of functions. Okay, I have a sequence of functions and I will give you an example. I am going to show you a small demo also, sequence of functions. So, the question is, is this sequence convergent? Is this sequence convergent? So, these kind of problems are always encountered in numerical analysis okay? because every method, almost every method that you have for solving uh, you know, most of the problems through computing is iterative. You start with a guess and you come up with a new guess and, and so on. Okay? So, uh, so, there is, there, is, uh, there is this need to look at conversions of sequences. So, we are going to define two notions. One is Cauchy sequence. So, so I am taking a set of an infinite set of uh, sequences uh, or vectors, infinite set of vectors which are generated by some process. You know, it could be some iterative scheme by which you are working or <coughs> whatever it is. Uh, now, I want to know how do I formally define convergence. A sequence, a sequence of vectors is said to be Cauchy. If a difference between x n minus uh, that is nth element in the sequence and mth element in the sequence. If this tends to 0, norm of this tends to 0 as m and n become infinity. So, more and more elements you generate in this, okay? more and more elements you generate in this, the, the vectors come closer and closer, closer and closer. Okay? Uh, well, in one dimensional vector space, so in one uh, in one dimensional vector space that is set of real numbers well when a sequence is cauchy it converges to a limit inside inside the set but depends upon the space funny things can happen if the uh, the space is not complete what is this business of completeness we'll come to that soon before that, let me define a convergent sequence. So, there are two different notions. One is Cauchy sequence, other is convergent sequence. Uh, these are not niceties just for the sake of nice mathematics. These are very, very relevant to computing. Now, what is a convergent sequence? So, I am considering this sequence again. In fact, this is a shorthand notation for sequence. I am not going to write every time k going from 0 to infinity or k going from 0 to n, whatever it is. Uh, curly braces uh, x superscript k is a sequence okay, in a norm linear, norm linear space or a norm vector space. Now, this is said to be convergent to, to a vector x star if this is said to be convergent to an element x star, if difference between x star and x k goes to 0, difference between x star and x k goes to 0 as k goes to infinity. Okay? So, what I want to show you is that it is not obvious that a Cauchy sequence will always be convergent. It depends upon the space that you are considering. A convergent sequence is always a Cauchy sequence, but vice versa is not necessarily true. 
okay a cauchy sequence may not be convergent a convergent sequence is always a cauchy sequence okay now examples will make it clear why i'm talking of this funny things and you will also realize that this is something that you deal with every day when you use computers okay so i'm going to take a example of a vector space in which a cauchy sequence is not convergent i'm going to take a example of a vector space in which a cauchy sequence is not convergent okay so basically and i want to give an example of this idea that convergence uh to a particular element uh is something different and it depends upon the space my first example here is my space x is my first example here is set of rational numbers q and i am taking field f also to be q okay i am taking a field also to be q so this combination will form a vector space okay and then i can find very easily a sequence in this vector space which is cauchy but not convergent okay a simple example is now consider a sequence well whether i start index with 0 or 1 doesn't matter i am starting with 1 uh x2 is 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 factorial and so on so my nth element in this sequence is 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial i think this is a well known series where does it converge to e but e is it a cauchy sequence it's known to be a cauchy sequence it's a convergent sequence in real line on real line on real line where does it converge to okay so this sequence xn this converges to element e as n tends to infinity we know that this particular element we know that this particular element tends to uh this particular element tends to e but e is not a rational number e is not a rational number okay so this element where it converges to is outside this space is outside this space okay so you have a funny situation you have a cauchy sequence if you apply the definition of cauchy sequence if you take any two elements as n and m goes to infinity you take difference it goes to zero that's very easy to show look at any book on real analysis you will see this proof it's just one or two pages of proof that this is a cauchy sequence but in this particular space it doesn't converge okay it doesn't converge and in this space i can find many such sequences i can find a sequence that is almost converging to pi but pi is irrational number pi is not there inside this space okay pi is not there inside this space so likewise likewise you know i have this sequence so this sequence that is 3 by 1 11 by 3 41 by 11 and so on it converges to okay not a rational number i can find infinite such examples where you have a convergent sequence you have a you have a cauchy sequence but not converging to an element inside this particular space so those are rational numbers so this sequence is converging somewhere but it is not converging inside this space it will never converge inside this space yeah so e doesn't belong to set of rational numbers that's what you're saying we know that from in, in we know that in the real line this will converge to e 
Why? These are all rational numbers. Yeah. So you can you can always define one common denominator. It's a rational number. It's a rational number. No, no, no. All these are rational numbers. I think you have to. We can talk about it little later. This particular thing is. These are all rational numbers. They are all rational numbers. They are not irrational numbers. So, also oh, you mean to say that one by third may not be expressible, but. Rational number is whether you can write it as integer upon integer. I can always write it as integer upon integer. Okay. Whether you can express it as a continued fraction, we are not looking at that problem right now. The true representation is integer upon integer. I can have a common denominator for this; it becomes a rational number. Okay. You are confusing between its representation and the computer. I am coming to that. Okay. So don't confuse between the two. Okay. So don't confuse, don't confuse one third with 0.33. Okay, don't confuse that with 0.33. Okay, if this is true about Q, it is also true about Q n. I can define a space, product space, which is Q n, n dimensional space. My x can be Q n. I can take a space which is where do you get Q n? When I am doing computing in a computer, okay, I can deal only with finite dimensional vectors. I can only deal with finite dimensional vectors, and in computer, you cannot represent many of these, uh, you know, irrational numbers. I cannot because computer has a finite precision. If I take 64-bit precision, the resulting number which you approximate as e. Actually, will be a rational number, something divided by some. I have to truncate, right? I cannot, I cannot have a representation. Do you understand what I'm saying? In a computer, whatever is the precision, 64 bit, you know, 128 bit, you go to very high, high precision computer. Okay, any number is actually represented as a, you know, in using binary 101010 sequence and there is finite number of bits used to represent a number okay so that number will always be representable as a rational number something divided by something i truncate it okay so the point which i want to make is that incomplete spaces are not so alien you know when you work with computer you are working with incomplete spaces Okay, and we have to bother. We have a Cauchy sequence, which doesn't converge. Okay, I have a Cauchy sequence which doesn't converge in a computer. I will have a Cauchy sequence which doesn't converge to a number to its true value. See, for all practical purposes, we say that well, this is almost close to e, but it's not e, right? It's not e. We take a approximation of pi, maybe you know, correct up to thousand decimals, but it is not pi. Okay. So we are working with this incomplete spaces, and then let me give you one more example, and I want to show a demonstration here of an incomplete space. So my second example is a set of continuous functions over minus infinity. Set of continuous functions. Over minus infinity to infinity. This is my second example. Okay, and I'm going to take an element. Uh, I'm going to construct a sequence in this particular vector space. And what I want to demonstrate is that this sequence will converge to a discontinuous function. Okay, I have a sequence of continuous functions converging to a discontinuous function. Okay, so so you are trying to you are trying to solve some partial differential equation or some problem. You construct the solution as a sequence of continuous functions, okay, or continuously differentiable functions. The sequence might converge to a non-differentiable, non-continuous function. Okay, so you have you can have funny situations. So my sequence here is this one by two plus 
my sequence here is a sequence of functions. These are continuous functions defined over interval minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. This is a function sequence defined. So, t goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. My k changes. k would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. I will get different functions for each value of k. Okay. So, I will get uh, k goes from say 1, 2 and so on. Okay. k goes from. So, I am just going to show you. Okay. So, this function sequence. I just want to uh, animate and show you what is happening. Okay, so this is for k equal to one. This is for k equal to six. I am going to increment by five. Okay, and see what is happening. This is k equal to eleven, sixteen, and so on. I just go on, right? So I am going closer and closer towards this step kind of a function, right? I am going closer and closer to the step function. <coughs> so, if you do this, I have gone only up to 100 or so. If I do this, if I do this by incrementing k much, much longer, much uh, to a larger value, this will converge to a step function. Okay. So, moral of the story is that I am starting with a set of continuous functions. Okay. I am generating a sequence in this, in this set, but this sequence does not converge to element in the set. Okay. The sequence does not converge to an element in the set. So, there is a problem. Okay. So, if, so what is, what is, what is nice about real, real line? What is nice about real line? That every real line, every sequence which is Cauchy will converge to an element inside the, right? Every Cauchy sequence on the real line will converge to a number on the real line. Okay. So, in some sense, real line is a complete set. There is nothing outside it. Okay. Whereas, set of all rational numbers is incomplete. Okay. There is something outside. Okay, and the sequences here seem to converge to something which is outside the space. Okay, seem to converge to something which is outside the space. So, what is nice about real line? It's complete space. Okay, what what is nice about because because real line is a complete space. Okay, same thing is true about R two two dimensional vector space. Any sequence in two dimensional vector space will converge to a point in two dimensions. Okay, any sequence in you know, n dimensional real Rn will converge to element in Rn. But in Qn, there are holes, you know. So, where the sequence will be Cauchy, but it will not converge. Okay. So, this spaces, you know, in which all, all sequences converge within the space are called as complete vector spaces. And these are special vector spaces. Okay. So, there is something different about the spaces in which, uh, so we move back to the blackboard. So, we want this nice property to hold even in the vector spaces. Okay. So, we call this, we will call this vector spaces, these vector spaces which have this special property as complete vector spaces or they are named after a famous mathematician Banach who actually founded this, one of the founders of functional analysis. So, what is a Banach space? So, every Cauchy sequence to converge to an element in space this word here every is important every Cauchy sequence. Okay. If I can find one sequence which does not converge the space is not a Banach space. Every Cauchy sequence should converge. So, so the real line or Rn or equivalently if you take complex numbers C n, okay, they have some very nice property. They are all complete spaces. Function spaces need not be complete spaces. Set of continuous functions we saw is not a complete space. Well, in functional analysis, you talk about 
completion of an incomplete space you add all the elements and then create a new space okay uh, which is which is complete and so on but we don't want to go into that those details right now i just wanted to sensitize you about the fact that even in the computer we are working with incomplete vector spaces okay and then you can get into funny situations in computing in advanced computing because of this incomplete uh, behavior well so far so good we talked about uh, so we started generalizing notions from three dimensions don't forget that we talked about a vector and then we said that are essential properties of a set which uh, the two essential properties vector addition and scalar multiplications okay so these two things hold in a set then or uh, if a set is closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication we call it a vector space any set so we freed ourselves from the notion of a vector space which is just three dimensional okay we can now talk about set of continuous functions set of continuously differentiable functions set of twice differentiable thrice differentiable and you can so now how many such spaces are there are infinite such spaces okay then we said well we now that's not enough to have just generalization of vector space we also need notion of length so we talked about norm right we talked about norm norm was in some sense generalization of notion of magnitude of a vector okay and we said there are so many ways of defining norms okay and a pair of a vector space and a norm defined on it will give you a normed vector space or normed linear space okay so this this up to here fine now we need something more i need i need angle okay one of the primary thing that you use in three dimensions one of the most fundamental result in uh, in our school geometry or in three dimensional geometry is pythagoras theorem and i need pythagoras theorem in all these spaces what am i going to do okay i need pythagoras theorem so i need orthogonality i need perpendicularity one of the most important concepts that you use in uh, applied mathematics in in modeling in physics in chemistry in everywhere orthogonality is a very very quantum chemistry chemistry in the sense you might wonder where in chemistry so orthogonality is very very important and we need to generalize the notion of orthogonality and that's where we will start looking at inner product spaces okay we'll start looking at inner product spaces now here the attempt is to generalize the concept of dot product how do you how do you define angle in three dimensions well if i am given any two vectors say x and y which belongs to r3 how do i find the angle between them so what i do is i find out x cap which is a unit vector in this direction normally i take a two norm here well why two norm will come to that why not one norm okay so there is something special about this two norm and y cap is equal to and then we say that dot product dot product that is x cap cos theta cos theta angle between these two vectors is just x cap transpose y cap right this is a fundamental way by which we define angle between any two vectors in three dimensions now can i can i come up with something that will generalize notion of angle in three dimensions when do you say two vectors are perpendicular in three dimensions dot product dot product when dot product is zero cos theta is zero two vectors are perpendicular okay so i'm going to i'm going to peg on to these these ideas well that dot product between unit vectors is defined is used to define angle when dot product is zero you call two vectors to be orthogonal okay and come up with a generalization in uh, in the product spaces okay of concepts of angle orthogonality and then once you have orthogonality you have pythagoras theorem 
ओके आई कैन टॉक अबाउट पाइथागोरस थ्योरम इन एनी एन डायमेंशनल इनफाइनेट डायमेंशनल स्पेस ऑफ कोर्स इट हैज टू क्वालिफाई सर्टन प्रॉपर्टीज वॉट आर दोज प्रॉपर्टीज दोज आर द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ अ इनर प्रोडक्ट स्पेस सो नाउ वी हैव टू स्टार्ट क्वेश्चनिंग वॉट इज वॉट इज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ एन इनर प्रोडक्ट ओके सी वी वी हैड थ्री प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मैग्नीट्यूड वॉट आर द्री प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मैग्नीट्यूड मैग्नीट्यूड ऑलवेज नॉन नेगेटिव ओके फॉर अ नॉन जीरो वैक्टर एंड जीरो फॉर अ जीरो वैक्टर ओके अल्फा टाइम्स यू गेट यू नो यू मल्टीप्लाई मॉड अल्फा गेट्स मल्टीप्लाई टू द नॉम एंड ट्राइंगल इन इक्वालिटी लाइक वाइज वॉट आर द इसेंशियल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ इन अ प्रोडक्ट इन दिस विच कैन बी यूज टू जनरलाइज इन एनी अदर वैक्टर स्पेस दोज वैक्टर स्पेसिस दोज वैक्टर स्पेसिस आर गोइंग टू बी कॉल्ड एज इन अ प्रोडक्ट स्पेसिस बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू डिफाइन a norm vector space in which additional structure is put called inner product all these spaces which we are describing till now we did not talk about inner product okay so now i am going to introduce something new which is a inner product space which will have definition of inner product what you will realize is there umpteen number of ways to define inner product and so the way of defining generalizing orthogonality is not unique okay and so we'll see this from our next lecture